Hello everyone. Today, BBC Sky at Night magazine is joined by Noura Almatrushi, who is the first ever female astronaut candidate from the United Arab Emirates. So, Noura, how, when did you first want to become an astronaut? I actually wanted to become an astronaut, I guess, around the age of five or six. Um, we were studying about the planets and our solar system at school. And uh, the teacher had us do an arts and crafts where we made uh, some of the astronaut equipment. We made uh, some helmets and uh, astronaut backpacks. Um, she took us on a trip to the surface of the moon. So she pitched a tent in the middle of our classroom. She had us go in and then when we went out, uh, the lights were turned off and she had everything covered in pieces of gray cloth. And uh, that was the day where uh, I decided that I wanted to become an astronaut mm -hmm. and I actually wanted to go and see for myself uh, what the surface of the moon looked like. And the United Arab Emirates, it's fairly new into the world of human spaceflight. So at the time when that happened, was there a possibility that you could have become a, a UAE astronaut? Uh, no, at that point, no. But, you know, as kids, you don't really, uh, like, you believe at that point that anything is possible and you can achieve anything. So I guess I, at that point, at that age, I didn't really think about if there was actually an astronaut program or not. In my head, I, I just wanted to be an astronaut and I was going to be an astronaut. And that was it. <laughs> it didn't matter if there was a program or there wasn't. Um, in my head, I was going to get there somehow, some way. And how did you go about starting on that journey? So I'll admit at certain times in my life, I, it did seem like impossible, but um, throughout my, like throughout my uh, time at school, even in university, like I, I selected uh, my major, like I chose to study mechanical engineering because of me wanting to become an astronaut. So I watched a documentary when I was in high school uh, about a group of astronauts who are going to the International Space Station. And um, the role of a mechanical engineer was highlighted in that uh, documentary. So I decided to uh, pursue a degree in mechanical engineering. Um, one of the reasons why I selected the university uh, I went to uh, is because I knew that they had uh, like an internship program with NASA. So uh, I selected that university based on that fact. Um, so I did end up working in a different field. Uh, I started working in the oil and gas industry, but um, as soon as I found the chance to switch to the space industry, I made that switch. Mm -hmm. And when did you first realize that actually there was a chance that you could become an astronaut, that there, there was a possibility that you could put in your application? Um, it was actually when they opened up um, uh, the applications for the first batch. So, um, and it was when uh, has, uh, they announced that they had selected Hazza and Sultan. And it was when Hazza actually made it to the International Space Station. So it was during uh, different moments, but uh, the reality of it just sunk in more with every step that they were doing in the uh, astronaut program. Mm -hmm. And how did you, how does one actually go about applying to be an astronaut? I believe that regardless if you want to be an astronaut or whatever it is you want to be, um, you have to develop yourself and gain different skills in terms of academics, technical skills, and soft skills, because if you just focus on one aspect, um, you're gonna be lacking in others. So um, you have to focus on different aspects of yourself, of your personality, um, and according to what is required of you to reach that goal. So to be an astronaut, you have to be, you have to have good leadership skills, you have to have good teamwork skills, um, you have to have different skills in different fields. So I, I guess I tried to be as 
adverse as possible in terms of all the activities I was doing when I was in school, when I was in university, even after that, like um, uh, different activities I'd be doing outside of work. Uh, I guess that's how I went about achieving this goal. Mm -hmm. And I should imagine it's quite a, a sort of intense procedure when you're actually going through the application process with like interviews. Yeah, it tests. is, especially if it's something and you wanted for a long time and something you really want. Uh, the feeling is very intense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so what was that application procedure like as you were going through? Was it just interviews or did you have to do tests as well? It, it, we did actually have to do a test in the beginning. It was sort of like a, an IQ test, uh, like an, a psychometric test as well. So it was a mixture of both. Um, they were also testing our technical skills. Uh, mm -hmm. And then there were like the interviews, obviously they did. And even during the interviews, they had uh, questions that would test your personality. How would you react? Um, and then we did also the, um, I believe it was, was it before or after? Okay, so we did medical tests as well. We did a bunch of medical testing just mm -hmm. to make sure that we were medically fit to be an astronaut. Um, we also did a teamwork, a teamwork exercise to check and like they were checking to see how we work together as a team. Um, we also did, uh, some physical tests as well. So fit, sorry, it was a fitness test. So mm -hmm. they tested our endurance, our strength, uh, basically the, that was what we had to go through during the application process. Mm -hmm. And I understand one of the, the interviews was you were confronted by a panel of, of astronauts um what yes. was it, it like to having always dreamed of being one being in the room with that many people who have actually been into space so the thing is I didn't know who would be in the panel when I went in so it was a bit of a shock because you know Hazan and Sultan were there and like they were they're the first two Emirati astronauts and that was the big deal and then there were two female astronauts from NASA which is also a big deal um so, yeah, it was a bit of a shock at first, but then, like, internally, I got so excited <laughs> that I was saying, as soon as this interview ends, I'm going to ask if I can take a picture with them. So I, I, I forgot at the end of the interview, I forgot to ask for a picture. <laughs> but, but I guess now I'll have a lot more chances to actually yeah. ask for pictures. Yeah, mm, absolutely. Um, hopefully even get a couple up on the International Space Station. Um, hopefully, yeah. And so then you eventually, you did get selected. What was mm -hmm. that moment like when they told you that, yes, you're, you're one of our astronauts? It was amazing. It was unreal. Um, I, obviously, I was ecstatic at that time. Uh, but then, you know, it actually started to sink in the role I'd be playing uh the amount of responsibility that came with this uh with this title of being an astronaut so um because i i'm going to be representing a whole country i'm going to be representing my country so uh i guess that feeling of uh, commitment and responsibility sunk in i'd say a couple of days after when like i started like actually realizing what was happening and so now you you have been selected um everybody knows uh, that you've been selected um have you actually started your training yet currently Mohammed and I haven't started the actual training um that will be starting next year at the Johnson Space Center with the new batch of NASA astronaut candidates um currently we're going through some I'd say basic or initial training at the Mohammed Barashid Space Center. Um, we started learning Russian. Uh, we also got our diving license and we will be doing some survival training and flight training as well in the future. And what are the aspects of, of the training that you're, you're really particularly looking forward to? 
I think it because Muhammad is a pilot and he like when I first actually sat down and talked to him and got to know him um he started talking about flying and how amazing that feeling was um and that got me very enthusiastic about trying to fly as well so I think the flight training like I I really want to fly at this point because of mm-hmm. how much he talks about how fun it is I, I want to try that for myself Mm-hmm. And are there any parts of it that you're dreading or not looking forward to? No, honestly, <laughs> I feel like it's all going to be fun and challenging. I enjoy a challenge. So no, I don't think I'm dreading anything at this point. I think that's a good attitude to go in with. It's, it's, it's a challenge. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's a challenge. So of the four astronauts with the United Arab Emirates, you're the only female astronaut and you're the first female astronaut. Uh, did you find that your gender affected your recruitment or your training in any way? No, I believe that everyone was given the same opportunity and chance um, because uh, for you to select people to represent uh, what you're working on, you wouldn't just pick anyone based on their gender or based on their last name or based on who you know because you have to make sure that that person is good enough for that role or that person is capable of achieving what you expect of them so uh, every person should strive to be a better version of themselves and that's not achieved with comparing yourself to others but it's comparing yourself to yourself, regardless of what gender you are, what nationality you are, or what your background is. And uh, I know a lot of space agencies throughout the world sort of have an issue with trying to get females, female space enthusiasts um, Mm -hmm. to help them progress in their careers. Are there a lot of other women in other areas of the Emirati space program? Um, So actually, one third of the applicants for the second batch were female. Um, And uh, I don't know if you know about the Emirates Mars mission, but 34% of the team were women and 80% of the team scientists were women as well. Mm -hmm. Um, The chair of the UAE Space Agency and the Emirati Minister of State for Advanced Sciences is actually a woman. Her name is Sarah Emiri. So Uh, there are a lot of women in the UAE space program or in the space industry in the UAE. And what are the the UAE's goals with what they want to achieve in in terms of human spaceflight in the coming years? So currently the astronaut office at the Mohammed Barashid Space Center is aiming to build a sustainable and diverse team of uh, highly competent Emirati astronauts that are fully qualified and equipped to take on any mission in the future. Because uh, currently there are no uh, set missions, but um, when you have a team ready, you'll be able to instantly send them off to any type of mission that would come. And is there any particular kind of mission that you would really, really like to get? I'd really, really, really like to make it to the moon. (laughs) (laughs) It's... It's, it's what actually got me interested in space. It's like the first memory of I have of me wanting to be an astronaut, of me wanting to make it to the moon and walk on the surface of the moon. So yeah, I'd really like to make it to the surface of the moon. Mm-hmm. So you, you're and looking actually at the... get to walk there. <laughs> looking at the Artemis mission, perhaps. Yeah, most likely. Like, I'd really like to be part of the Artem- Artemis mission, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it certainly sounds like if, if that's your goal, you're coming in at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully you'll get to, to, to experience that. Um, but you, you kind of touched on it earlier, but one of the, the big parts of an astronaut's job is that every time I, I, I've spoken to an astronaut in the past, they've said they felt this kind of responsibility. You're not just mm-hmm. going in for space for you or even your country, you're going for the whole world. Um, yes. And it's about inspiring and educating people. So mm-hmm. do you have any goals in, in that regards about what you would like to achieve back here on Earth? I think I'd like to help feed, um, you know, that hunger for exploration and mystery solving. Um, it's what got me interested in space in the first place. Um, that drive 
to ask questions and want to know why a certain thing is a certain way or why does it work like this? Um, yeah, that, that I think that aspect, I'd like to feed that aspect that's in people mm -hmm. or in the, the human race in general. And <laughs> so if there's anybody who's listening to this conversation and also wanting to become an astronaut at some point in the future, what would be your best piece of advice to them? I guess never give up on it. Like, even if it seems impossible at that point, uh, just keep working towards your goal. Look for opportunities, even if they're small, just take them. Um, and if you can't find opportunities, then create them for yourself. Like, it's, it's pretty easy at this point for you to build connections with people and those connections really can open a lot of doors for you. And through those connections, you'll be able to open, open up new opportunities for yourself. So if you keep working towards what you want to achieve, you will get there one day. Mm -hmm. Well, that is a lovely sentiment to end on. So thank you very much, Nora, for taking the time out of your day to talk to us. Thank you for having me. Thank you.